everybody. In this video, I'll be sharing um, how I get these really nice prints here. I'm going to show you the other one if I can get it on my hand. There we go. These nice prints on uh, clear packing tape. So if you're interested, I do chatting and it's a real-time video. So if you're not interested in chatting or real-time videos, then please exit out. Click off. <laughs> Click off. Anyways, so yeah. Uh, aren't they pretty? And then I've got some secrets for you throughout the video. And a question for all of you guys to participate and leave a comment. And that question will be in the video also. So there you go. I love them. I'll catch you guys later. Hey everybody. <clears throat> How are you guys doing? That's what I'm doing today. I'm just moping around and uh, I decided to try something that everybody here on YouTube seems to have tried except for me. It's basically jelly printing and then transferring to, uh, what is that called, acetate? No, it's clear, clear packing tape. Ha! And I'll show you in a second. Just let me get this going. You want, well, I don't know if you want that, but what I've experienced is the thinner the paint, the thinner you get it on, the better the quicker it dries. So basically the steps are to just grab some color, add it to your jelly plate. I want to try this on a piece of um, sealed wood, basically uh, sealed onto, not sealed onto, but a piece of wood that has lacquer on it. To see if you guys that don't have a jelly plate or haven't made one yet, because you can hand, hand or home make one. There's lots of recipes on YouTube for that. Basically, you put down your first coat, and then your second coat and third coat. From my understanding, I'm not sure though, you can't blow dry this. I don't know why, but you're supposed, supposedly you can't or you shouldn't. But this is what we're going to end up with. Not this exact piece, but basically this. And then I have a trick up my sleeve that I haven't seen yet on YouTube. This part I have, but the next part that I'm thinking of doing, I have not seen. And here's another piece to sharing with you guys while the first coat dries. And then these two pieces, I put one on top of the other to make a big, fat piece of tape. Okay, you can use this on your mixed media. Use it in your art however you like. Um, let me show you another one. Where are they? I already lost them. Here they are. And my first go at them. Here's my first go. And the one I just finished showing you was my second go. And the one I'm filming right now is going to be my third go at it. But they're just gorgeous. So you just need acrylic paints. This one has actually uh, Deco Arts Media Mister on my jelly plate mixed with acrylics. And then you're going to need your stays on. Isn't that beautiful? your stays on ink pad and then you're going to need random stamps. Okay, so let me put these aside. And um, what I like to do is grab cards that I just have any cards. These are just cards with quotes. and. Um, pick up some of the paint. That way, you know, you don't you're you don't start your card with a blank page and just put them aside. 
for when uh, you're ready to art on top of your little pieces here that can be probably ATCs, I'm not sure. And I just do this so that it thins out the paint and then I can add my second layer of paint. I don't want to get it all. And I'm just drying it. It doesn't take too long to dry. I don't know why you can't put the blow dryer on it. I'm not sure, but I don't want to chance it. Just this jelly plate was gifted to me in Happy Mail oh, a while back. And then you grab your second color. I like to work with bright colors if possible. If I can find any of neon green. Well, I don't want it to look Christmassy though. Let's do uh, neon orange. And again, you just need a little bit. And then some yellow, neon yellow. Remember, if you're not happy with the colors you chose, just work on top of that also. You can just let it dry and then work on top of it. See, like right now, these colors I'm not happy with. But that's okay. I'll grab the same little random piece and take some of that off. Remember, you can fast forward through this. You can throw it on mute. There's a little gear down below you can fast forward through. And then let's do a color that, I, that always makes me happy, and that is Sea Breeze. This co color never fails to make me happy. That's good enough. And I'm going to try to dry it again. How many of you guys have played with a jelly plate or made a homemade jelly plate? Leave it down below in the comments. And what are your experiences with the jelly plate? And the same random piece. I'm going to take some of this off. And I like that look that it's giving right now. So I'm going to say that I'm happy with it. And then I'm going to let it dry a lot more. I'll probably let it dry, oh, I would say about 30 minutes. Then when we come back, we'll stamp this up. Okay, we'll be back. Hello, we're back now. It's been about mm, 40 minutes. 
it's quite dry and these spots here that you see I ended up adding and the reason I ended up adding it off camera is because I was looking through my paints and this is an old paint I think I have had this for a good oh, eight years or maybe even more I'm, I'm, I'm thinking more it's a really pretty color it's a metallic peridot but it's messed up but I don't want to get rid of it <laughs> I use what I have so I just ended up going like this just so that I can use it up here and there so let's get on to stamping use any stamps you have anything really even your homemade stamps uh, you do have to use a um, permanent ink and stays on is a permanent ink it says solvent ink pad for every surface um, acid free archival fast drying solvent ink okay I'm a I'm not your average inker I don't do this I literally scrub into it probably messes up my pad but that's okay and then go ahead and stamp onto your dry jelly plate now this is all over YouTube many have done it just I hadn't done it don't know why I hadn't done it but I hadn't done it so I wanted to give it a go plus they're so pretty and second I have quite a few more ideas so watching somebody on YouTube has inspired me and not somebody so many I should say because there are so many Um, watching so many on YouTube do this and then doing it myself has opened up a door in my mind um, what else my head says what else can you do how far can you take this where can you take it what else can you do with it stop You don't have to repeat your pattern. You can do it all over the place. You can skip around. I have done that. Benini, behave. Um, I've heard you're not supposed to stamp and rock, but I do. I stamp and I rock. I rock the stamp around. I don't clean my stamps, I just rub it on my back, my drop paper. I like how it looks very distressed, very ununiform. I, I really love this look. And you never know what you're going to get. And then I come in and I fill the spots with another stamp, which would be something small like a butterfly. And uh, I basically, I made my own little stamp handle. These are cling stamps that you get for like a dollar and you get a bunch of them. I know I can't see what I'm doing, but I'm fine with that. And I throw in a stamp of the butterfly in random places because you never know where the acetate tape, clear packing tape is going to end up or what it's going to pick up. So I like to put in some kind of filler stamp. Now of course you don't have to. I'm just here to share what I'm doing.
All right, I think we're good. Let it dry a little bit. It says fast drying, so it shouldn't take too long. Now, where did these stamps come from? I don't know. They were in Happy Mail, and they're gorgeous. And I'm just using 99 cent from the 99 cent store. Um, super clear shipping packing tape from the brand Basics. And I already pre-cut pieces. I have them here on the side. And you just start laying it down. I lay one end and then I pat it so that I get less creases. You can lay one on top of the other and get a very thick um, tape. Basically you're doubling up the length. I don't know if I did that on this one. You can even double it up all the way down and lay one on top of the other. It's kind of hard to see what you're doing. Well, for me it is. And I, I need one more. And then I'm going to have leftover. A leftover spot right here and I'll show you what I do with that leftover spot you can use a credit card you can use whatever you have I just have this around so I'm going to use it just to soothe, smooth it out make sure that it made complete contact And I even press down with my fingers and hands just to make sure we got it all. Then you just lift. So it looks like two tapes, these two tapes are together. That's fine. We'll pick them up together. And if it wants to not stick, just give it help it out a little. Push it onto your your tape. Sometimes it leaves these behind, but I think it's cool looking because it looks distressed. But when it starts to leave a big piece like this here, I just uh, scrape it. Go back down. And see if I picked it up. Usually it picks it up. Hi, honey. Well, hi. You coming to say hello, honey? I'm going to come and lay right here. <laughs> hi. 
Honey, you got your butt in my face. Alright, there's that. Let me share with you guys what it looks like. That is beautiful. Very, very, very pretty, I think. Then we have this piece here. I'll show you what I do with that because I want it to not stick at all. Um, I'm not sure what to use to stick it down. I'm just thinking uh, Mod Podge, something in that kind of glue family. There we go. That one went a little faster. Isn't that so pretty? Okay. So down here we have some leftover. Why waste that, right? So what I like to do is get the tape that didn't get covered and I lay it down on top and see if I could pick it up. I could have went the other way, but I just decided to go this way. Let's see if I could pick it up. Yeah, we picked it up. So now we have more tape covered. And I still have some that I can pick up. want to use it all up. And I still have a little bit more. And then the other piece of tape still has tape that I can pick up some more image from. <laughs> and there's still a little bit more. None of it goes to waste. Then I'll do my next print. And whatever's left I'll pick up. And I'll just go around picking up. And there we go. We're all done. And then you can run it on your clothes. This just to pick up lint so it becomes unsticky, and that way you can roll this up and store it. You roll it up over a stick or something and store it. But for now, I'm going to keep them on the side because I'm going to go ahead and continue uh, off camera making some more designs. But I just thought I'd come and share that. And then I have a trick up my sleeve, but I can't share that yet because I don't have the product. I have to, excuse me, go searching for the product that I need in order to finish my idea. But I'm going to upload this anyways. Then I got another idea up my sleeve that has to do with this same technique. So I've got two ideas with this one technique to share with you guys. So I'll come back later and. Uh, you guys will see this, and then I'll come back later, and you guys will see the other two ideas. All right, catch you guys later, and if you'd like to help fund this channel, the button's up there. Every dollar helps, and I'm very grateful for everything and all of you guys. And please leave a comment down below what you think I'm up to. All righty, bye-bye.